the Lord again. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice oh, yeah. and be glad in it. For the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. If you happen to be in God's house, would you just clap your hands and give God glory? Why do you clap your hands? Why do you clap your hands?
say yes, Lord. Yeah. At this time, we want to recognize any first time visitors. If this is your first time ever coming to the New Shelby Missionary Baptist Church. Would you please stand so we can recognize you at this time? Amen. Thank God for everybody's feeling like that. All right, all right. So at this moment now, what we want to do is we want to incorporate this every Sunday. For those of you that text Saudi, got your cell phones with you, once you pull out your cell phones even now, go to our Facebook page, like and share the video with your friends and family. Even look around the room if there is some members from New Shelby that is not here. Right. Share that with them so that they can see the service that's going on even right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. For those of you that's on Facebook, go on our Facebook page, share it. Share it to your page. Do that for us now uh, so that we can benefit and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everything is on the screen even now. Show me network, amen. 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 Yeah, and join our live stream, share our live stream, mm -hmm. uh, so that everyone can see the gospel of Jesus amen. Christ amen. is still relevant and it is still strong. Amen. 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 I believe I'll say that one more time because those of you that are looking down at your phone, I said the gospel of Jesus Christ is still relevant yeah. and it is still strong. Is his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's right. Amen. As we think about that, we want the world to know Amen. that Jesus is alive Amen. and he is well. Amen. 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 To the glory of God, our Father. Thank you so much for doing that. Now, this is a second moment of our service where we come down to the altar. We want you to. Bring your burdens down to the altar, and lay them down at the feet of Jesus, knowing that God has the power to deliver, set free, and save. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you are facing, God can handle it better than you can if you just leave it alone. Amen. I have thanksgiving in my heart, and in my heart, I want to just tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Will we all stay that's willing and able to come down to the altar? Come down.
besides you, there is none. God, before we ask you for anything, we want to take this moment in service to thank you for everything. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. Millions didn't make it, but we are one of the ones that did. And God, that's enough to be grateful about. God, somebody lost their life even this morning. Their alarm clock is still going off. But God, you woke us up this morning. You started us on your way. And God, we simply say thank you. God, when you woke us up, we had the activities of all of our limbs. That's what we say thank you, sir. God, when we went into the bedrooms and saw our children doing all right, God, that's enough to be grateful about. Our family's doing well. God, we thank you today. God, then we went, we, when we went in the kitchen, God, we had food on the table. God, when we went through our refrigerator, we, had, we got the opportunity to choose what we wanted to eat. And God, we say thank you, sir. When we got dressed, God, we had an option of clothes to put on our hands. And God, we thank you for that. God, we thank you for everything that you've done for us. Everything that you're doing. But God, most of all, we thank you for everything that you're getting ready to do. Now, God, somebody came with their head back down. But God, you've got the power to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. And so, God, we trust you even when we cannot trust you. Some of us don't know why our next meal is going to come from. But God, we believe that you can and believe that you will. God, somebody may not have the money to pay their bills, God, but we trust you, God. God, no matter what the situation has been this week, God, I pray, God, that you will lift up every bit burnt down kids, God. I pray, God, that you will help us to carry our load, God. For we know that you are a very load carrier.
than the four district people. Oh, yeah. For the sake of preaching, God, I pray that you'll hide us behind your cross and cover us with your precious blood. Oh, yes, Lord. And may your name be glorified. May your people be edified. And may the kingdom of darkness be horrified. Yeah. Father, we need a word from you. Yeah. Speak, Lord, until lives are changed. Oh, yeah. Speak, Lord, until mountains are moved. Yeah. Speak, Lord, until giants have to fall down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No matter what happens, God, mm -hmm. may you care for the mind of your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And can we clap our hands for the choir and the good music? Amen. Awesome, awesome job. Amen. 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 We give God glory for all of our being here and to the official staff of this church, to all of our deacons and trustees. So we thank God for each and every one of you. To all of our mothers, God bless you. Amen. Amen. To, again, to this choir and musicians, host of family and friends that are here. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you. It is a blessing uh, just to be in the house of God. Amen. Amen. This, this, this is a joy. Now, I don't know about you, but on Sunday mornings, it's never a burden for me to get up on Sunday morning. I can't wait to get to the house of God. Amen. I got in about Two o'clock this morning mm -hmm. uh, from singing last night. Mm -hmm. Amen. But about six o'clock, I was right back up because I am excited to get to the house of God. Amen. 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 And anytime I can get here, uh, it is just a joy to stand before God's people. Amen. Amen. I certainly want to thank God for my wife being here. Amen. 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 And my oldest son is here. All right. Amen. <laughs> There is a word from, from the Lord that will not be before you long. John chapter 15 and verse number 7. Mm -hmm. You'll be talking and hovering around from verse number 1 to verse number 17. But the key verse is verse number 7. Okay. And you get it when you stand for the reading of God's word. Standing for the word does not add power to the word. The Bible declares that in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm -hmm. If the word is God, then the word already has power. Mm -hmm. And I believe this, that the word has stood for us. The very least we can do is stand for it. Amen. 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 World famous wrestler. He was wrestling a good time this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about him. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Listen, I, I believe when you give anything to God, you ought to give it your heart. You don't do it, don't it do it. I believe that. I believe that. When we have those football games and basketball games, we're going to give it all that we got. Amen. Ain't no sense in coming in God's house and then getting quiet. John chapter 15 and verse number 7. Are y'all there? Yes. If ye abide in me, mm -hmm. and my words abide in you, mm -hmm. ye shall ask what ye will, mm -hmm. and it shall be done unto mm -hmm. you. Y'all see yes. yes. Amen. For the next few moments, with the help of God, did I say, we're going to talk about uh, the benefits of abiding. Mm -hmm. The benefits yes. of abiding. All right. Praise is the flower phase, but the word of our God shall forever stand. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Amen. Usher, sign you for serving you can be seated. Amen. The benefits of abiding. That's right. The cause we're doing, verse number one through verse number 17, I will not get finished today. That's all right. Uh, but I promise you, if I don't finish it today, I'll come back next Sunday and all finish right, it up. All right. It's kind of like some good leftovers. <laughs> and if you leave it, then the next day is a whole lot better because it's <laughs> seasoned. All right. You're right. You're right. But you enjoy knowing something about the season. 
season have enough time to sit in. That's right. And so we're going to let the seasoning sit in all this week, and we're going to come back and finish it next week. All right. All right. But I want to share this because we're living in a time where the love of God and the love for his word is waxing cold. Come on now. Come on, preacher. We're getting away from loving God for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because when we love God for ourselves, it will show up through his word. You're right. All right. The Bible declares it like this, that his word is a lamp into our feet mm -hmm. and a light into our path. The purpose of God's word is to show us the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The purpose of the word of God is to be a navigation system for Christians that believe that Jesus is the Christ, son of the living God. You're right. His word is supposed to be a map on the way that we should go. Mm -hmm. But we've got to read his word to know his word. You're right. You're right. We've got to be in his word to understand his word. That's the benefit of having Sunday school and Bible study because in this moment, if I say something that you're not too sure of, mm -hmm. you can't stop me and say, Reverend, go back over there. Again. That's right, you're right. But when we're in Sunday school and when we're in Bible study, you have the luxury and the privilege of saying, well, could you cover that one more, one more time? time. One more time. Rewind that one and give it to me one more time. You're right, you're right. One more time. But, but in settings like these, we are trying to be inspired and and so we, we have to move on. But but when we get to those sacred moments where we can study God's word, those, those moments really help us to mature and to grow in God. All right. So we get to John chapter 15, and it's a lot going on. That's the reason why I can't finish it this week. But if you if you look at chapter number 15, it, it, it kind of starts out mid-conversation. Jesus starts out in verse number one saying, I am the true vine. Right. The reason why he's saying this in the middle of the conversation is because you've got to go all the way back to chapter number 13 to see what the conversation was about. All right, all right. A lot of times we as Christians, we we will start in, in chapters and, and we'll just read this verse and we appreciate this one verse, but but in order to understand the totality of it, you've got to go back a couple of chapters. All right. Sometime. Because the Bible is not a bunch of stories. They need the Bible is one story and all together. And you, you're getting different perspectives uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation. It's talking about one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. You're right, you're right. I wish I had a church. You're right, you're right. Yeah. And so, brothers and sisters, when we get to chapter number 15, you cannot start in chapter number 15 because it, it starts you out. By a midstream. Have you ever watched a movie and, and 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 back in the day the movies was on cassette tape and and if somebody had watched the cassette tape, if they didn't watch it all the way through, it was started right where they ended. All right, all right, man. Are y'all too young for that? Okay. <laughs> And, and what you would have to do is you would have to take that cassette tape and, right. and, and rewind it back with, right. your, with your finger or with a pencil or something like that to that nature in order to get to the beginning. Well, the beginning of this story is in chapter number 13. Chapter number 13, they're having many discussions because you don't have to go there and just look up at me when I tell you what's going on there. They're having a discussion in, in, in what is called the, the upper room. They, All right. They're having a discussion in the upper room around chapter 13 during the Last Supper. Uh, try, Jesus is trying to uh, relay some things to his disciples as he's getting ready to be betrayed and ultimately crucified. All right, all right. He's trying to tell some last minute 
uh, strategies and some last minute important things to his disciples. And, and so finally, we get to chapter 15 and, and in mid-conversation, Jesus shows the deity and the divinity of who he is because he says, I am the true vine. Amen. If you've ever questioned the deity of who Jesus is, uh, this one verse can, can single-handedly uh, take away any doubt that Jesus is God the Father and God the Son, and they are one entity. All right. Because from the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, God established who he was, uh, just like he did when he talked to Moses. Uh, he says, I am that I am. That I am. Do I have any witnesses? Right. He says, that covers every scenario that you'll ever need. If, if you need bread, I am that I am. If you need a mother, I am that I am. If you need a father, I am that I am. If you need a friend, I am that I am. I am Jehovah Jireh. I am Jehovah Nisi. I am Emmanuel. God of the, I, I am whatever you need me to be. Well, brothers and sisters, when you fast forward to the New Testament from Matthew to Revelations, Jesus establishes that God the Father uh, plans us. All right, man. Uh, he, 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 he lets us know that number one, God the Father plans us. He, he establishes us from the beginning of time. He, he establishes who we are and who we are to become. Mm -hmm. He plans us. Somebody say he plans us. Yeah. Yeah. God the Father plans us and, and he connects all of us by saying, I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Yeah, right. now, now here it is. Jesus is establishing his relationship with God the Father, but his deity in who he is because he says, I am now. Mm -hmm. God was the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi, Matthew to Revelations, and even this present hour, Jesus says, now I am. Oh, yeah. What God once was to those that God, uh, that needed God, now Jesus is on earth and he is there to be the person and the personality that we all need. You're right. Okay. All right. And he said, he gives us a, a total of seven I am statements, uh, but but when you understand every statement, he, in, he encloses and he entails everything that you need. He said, I am the bread of life. And the reason why we thank God for I am statements is because everything that Jesus established that he was, you are not. All right. Amen. I believe I'll try that one more time. I said, everything that Jesus established that he was, you and I are not. All right. If, if, you, if you think you are, just go ahead and tell somebody that's thirsty tomorrow, I am uh, the, 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 the water when you're thirsty. All right. If, if you think you are uh, who Christ is and who he is to be for us, uh, the next time you get hungry uh, to, and your children get hungry, just tell them, oh, don't worry about it, baby. I, I am the bread of life. All right. And see how that worked out for you. All right. What you'll establish is you and I are not and will never be who Christ is. All right. Now, we are to be like him, but we will never be him. All right. Right. We are to be followers of him and we are to gain uh, insight on who he is so that we can draw closer to him, but we will never be who he is. All right. And it was established that way, not for us to, to put our heads down and say, well, I'll never be what I could be, but thanks be to God, I may not be what I should be, but thanks be to God that I'm not all that I used to be. Are y'all praying with me today? Is there anybody in this house that can testify that you may not have dotted all of your eyes, you may not have crossed all of your teeth, and you may not be where you want to be in life, but thanks be to God when you look back over your life, you had all that you used to be. As a matter of fact, that you ought not mind shouting about that fact because if the truth be told, we all of us used to be some something else. All of us used to be something 
something and, and we can go down the road, but, but thanks be to God that causes us to triumph that we may not be where we need to be in life, but we show it where we used to be in life. And when we establish who Christ is, he says, I am the true vine. The, re the reason why he establishes that he is the true vine is because he's trying to uh, connect all of us together. He lets us know that you and I need one another. Amen. Amen. Not only do we need one another, but we need him more than anything. Amen. Are y'all praying with me? And so verse number one lets us know that God the Father plans us. But, but then uh, verse number four lets us know that God the Son purchases us. You're right. In other words, brothers and sisters, we were all bought with the price. With the price. Oh, uh, when you think about that price, none of us could afford the price tag that was given. Uh -oh. Bible declares that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Right. When we understand that all of us have a sin nature, uh, we'll understand that we could not afford to pay our sin debt. You're right. Lord, I'm, I'm you right. You're right. You're right. right. When we understand that we have a sin nature and we were created into sin, we were born and shaped in iniquity, we ought not mind giving God the glory because he paid a price that none of us could ever pay. God the Son purchased us, but then verse number five proves that God the Holy Spirit proves us. All right. God the Father plans us. God the Son purchases us. But then God the Holy Spirit proves us. All right. In other words, it, He shows up in our walk. You're right. He shows up in our talk. He shows up in our attitudes. And so deliver me from a child of God that said they have been born again, but still walking around with a, excuse my language, but a stank attitude. All right. You're right. You're right. Uh, You're right. Yeah. But de deliver me from someone that, that, that says I, I am a representative of who Jesus is, and, and, and I'm trying to be more and more like him every day, and we're speaking in tongues on Sunday, but we'll speak to our neighbor when we see him in Walmart on Monday. Preaching a whole lot bigger than I'm saying amen. Yes, Deliver me from someone that says they've got the Holy Spirit down on the inside, and then you you have to you have to keep them uh, under subjection because their attitude is so bad. You can't hardly stand to even speak to them, but they claim to have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit, what it does is it proves that God is on not only the outside of us, but God is on the inside of us. Yes, sir. That's the purpose of the Holy Spirit, uh, to change us from inside to out. Many Christians want to work on the outside and make the outside look good when the inside look raggedy. But what God wants to do is change us from the inside that the inside may be beautiful even when the outside don't look like what the inside is going through. Are y'all praying with me today? In other words, brothers and sisters, God gets on the inside of us. He changes us from the inside and he works his way on the outside. And when he does that, you don't have to walk around with a, a big Bible under your arm to, uh, to show that you are a, a Christian. And you don't have to walk around with a three-piece suit on Monday through Saturday to prove that you know who God is. But when God gets on the inside of you, you will speak to people that you know don't like you. You will love your enemies. changed from 
from the inside. Things that used to bother me don't bother me. Are y'all praying with me today? I used to uh, look at co-workers that would roll their eyes and I would get mad. It would mess up my whole day. Now I can see them rolling their eyes and I smile even bigger. I used to couldn't stand walking in a room where I knew people was talking about me. But now when I walk in a room where I know they're talking about me, that I put a little pep to my skin. Somebody said I've been changed from the inside. And what, I, what, I, what I've learned is the devil can't stand. I know that's bad English, but it's good preaching. The devil can't stand when you've been changed from the inside because when you've been changed from the outside, he can change your outer appearance. But what he can't do is get on the inside. I don't believe it, so I need a witness. Come here, Job. It was you that God said, have you considered my servant, Job? Yes, go through what he got to go through. Yes, he lost his money. Yes, he lost all that he had. But what was on the inside rose up on the outside. What's on the inside will always show up, not in the good times, saying, but what's on the inside will always show up when all hell is broken. I'm trying to talk to the people that's been going through uh, trials and tribulations. I'm trying to talk to the people that's been struggling and straining. Can I tell you? Because you'll, you'll begin to say, I may be going through, but thank God, I don't look like Lord, what I'm going through. And I, and I stand in this room, I'm looking at some people that don't look like what they're going through. You don't believe it, but, but I believe there is somebody on your road that if you ask them about their week, they will tell you how crazy that week was. But when you look at them, they still look like they got it going on. It ain't because everything is just that good, but tell me, it's because they got something on the inside. As a matter of fact, my big mama would say back in Arkansas, the what's on the inside will make you run and ain't nobody behind you. It'll make you feel rich when you ain't got a dad. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, it'll make you cry and ain't nothing wrong with you. Yeah. How many can say, I got something on the inside? Yeah. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit, it proves us. Yeah. Because when we are going through all hell and high water, we can still have the victory. Yeah. When it is, it looks like that the devil is on our trail and he's just about to get the best of us. The Bible says it like this when Satan comes in like a flood That's right. yeah. he will lift up his standard against him. In other words, brothers and sisters, God places something on the inside of all of us that will always prove who you are. All right. He puts us something on the inside of us not only does it prove who we are, but it proves whose we are. That's right. yeah. That's right. and can I tell you, greater is he that's within us than he that's within the world. That's In other right. words, brothers and sisters, Jesus says, I am the true man. True man. He establishes that, that I am everything that you need. You're right. But but I like what I like about Jesus is though he though he found himself in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and he understood that yes, I am God in flesh, but what I'm going to do is I'm gonna still give glory to my father. Right. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. You're right. In other words, brothers and sisters, verse number one establishes the fact that Jesus is simply uh, 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 the, the tool being used by God. All right. But God is doing everything on the inside. Yes, sir. In other words, brothers and sisters, he's showing that, that, that everything that happens in your life, God is using it for his glory. Right. He says, every branch, verse number two, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, 
he taketh away. That's right. Lord have mercy. Yeah. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth yeah. that it may bring forth more, more fruit. Yeah. yeah. Can I tell you, as a believer of Jesus Christ, Christ has called us to be fruit bearers. That's right. What I've learned about the goodness of our God is Deacon Gibbs told us a couple of Sundays ago that the fruit of God is low hanging fruit. That's right. Lord, I love that because in other words, he's saying everything that God establishes you to become, he makes it readily available and easy for you to obtain. Lord, in other words, brothers and sisters, yes, he expects fruitfulness out of all of us, but he don't expect fruitfulness that you cannot obtain. He expects you to understand that I am everything that you need in order to be fruitful. Right. Okay, let me slow down and say it one more time. He says, every branch that beareth not fruit, God taketh away. He says, he taketh away. Do y'all see that? He says, every fruit, verse number two, that beareth not fruit, he, who is he? He establishes that God is the dresser. He is the husband man. He is the gardener. In other words, he says, every fruit that every branch that beareth not fruit, he takes it away. All right. And so, can I just tell you, for two or three of us that's been going through some stuff and been losing some friends, some things, some nouns, some people, places, and things along the way, don't be discouraged and don't be dismayed because anything that's taken away is taken away by God. All right. That's right. I believe I said it one more time. I said anything that's taken away is taken away by God. That's the reason why you don't have to be discouraged when you go through that divorce. That means it was not meant for you. Y'all understand that? You don't have to be discouraged when you lose that job. That means God got something better for you. Y'all understand? In other words, God is Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. And I don't care if you walk off and leave me by myself. As long as I got Jesus, I got everything I need. Somebody shout, God, he is everything that I need. Yeah. He's everything. I believe that's my answer right there. I said, God is everything that I need. When I'm down, he lifts me. When I'm, when I'm low, he feeds me. When I'm hungry, he takes care of me. He provides for me. And when I'm lonely, he brought me in the midnight hour. Yeah. So he says, every branch that beareth not fruit, takes it away. All right, God. And so there is somebody in this room that, 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 on this, that, that does not understand why you have been losing what you've been losing, but can I tell you, you've been losing some stuff because God is taking some stuff away. All right. And you've got to get to the point where you just like Joe, uh, you said God gives yeah. and God can decide to take away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Are y'all praying with me today? He says, every branch that beareth not fruit, he takes away. But watch what he says. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purges. Yeah. And wait a minute. More fruit. <laughs> yes, sir. You would think that if I'm providing fruit, that God would appreciate the fruit that I'm given. How about that? Surely, God is not a God that, 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 that makes me suffer when I'm bearing fruit, is he? All right, all right. But then, Come on, in the words of Jesus, he says, if you don't bear fruit, uh -oh. he just completely cut that away. He gets rid of that one because that one is no good to nobody. That's right. But, but, but watch what he says then in the contrast. But what drove, he says, but the one that do bear fruit, he purges it. Lord, have mercy. In other words, he, 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 he cuts on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not to hurt them, but to make them grow even the more. Now watch this. When I first read this, I really thought God was tripping. <laughs> when I first read this, let it be, I really said, no, wait a minute now. Ain't no way. And I read this a thousand times. But when I read it this week, something got a hold of me. Because at first, I would have thought that God would have been just pleased if I bear even a little fruit. All right. But, but, but. 
But, but Jesus says he's not comfortable with you bearing a little fruit. Amen. But he says when you only bear a little fruit, he got to cut on you. He got to hurt you a little bit so that you can bear even more fruit. In other words, brothers and sisters, for that person that's been crying in the midnight hour, it is a purpose behind your tears. For the purpose that's Sunday morning. 
Right. Used to be a time where you said, God, if you just bless me with the house. All right, God. Then God bless you with that house. And now on, on Wednesday night, you just got to clean up the house. <laughs> All right, God. In other words, you're putting stuff before God. You said, God, just bless me with a husband. And now, now it's only convenient for you to do stuff for him on Sunday morning. All right. Be careful. Because God will purge that. He will. And he'll cut it away in order so that you can bear real food. Amen. God expects all of us to be fruitful. God expects all of us to multiply. You're right, God. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, in my closing, the doors of the church is open. Whenever you don't multiply, whenever you bear little fruit, oh, yeah. God begins to purge you. And that word purge, it simply gives you the analogy of, of finding that one spot in it. All right. That's kind of diseased. Just a little spot. And it don't take much. It's just like if you, if you were to, to, to have a cancerous cell in your body. The doctor says, I've got to get rid of this one little spot because if I don't get rid of this one little spot, it's going to spread. That's right. So what the doctor does is he goes in and cuts right there. That's what purging looks like. The very one thing that you're the most comfortable with, God will purge that one spot. Real. Not to kill you, not to not to hurt you, not to make you angry, but to make you more and more fruitful. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe there's somebody under the sound of my voice that at one time you were fruitful. You were reading your Bible, you were studying, you were doing what God would have you to do, and all of a sudden you 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 lost that way. What God says is, I've got to purge you That's right. to make you more fruitful. Yes. He says, i got to cut away some stuff in order to make you more fruitful. But the benefit of abiding is, God knows what's best for us. I'll say that again. I said, the benefit of abiding is, God knows what's best for us. That's right. Yeah. Although through our weary eyes, sometimes we can't see. And so instead of complaining, we ought to just say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for taking that man away that I thought was for me. Thank you for taking that job away that I thought was for me. Thank you for taking all of those things that I thought was best for me. Thank you for taking them away because what you did, you purged me in order to be better. And how many can say I'm better because of what I've been Abide so that God can purge you so that you can be more fruitful. If you're here and you hear his voice, harden out your heart. You ought to come while the blood is running warm in your veins. You may need a church home that, that helps you to grow and helps you develop in God. You can come now. You can come by letter, Christian experience, or baptism. You are come when you hear his voice telling you that you, you aren't the fruitful Christian that you really should be. You know that you could be doing a little bit better. This is the place that God will have you to be. So that you can hear right now words that, that will cause your mind to think about the things that you could be doing. Abide in him. There is benefits of abiding. We see none has come, still there is room. If Israel is not saved, Jacob will not lose his reward. You clap your hands for the word of God.
I'm telling you that God wants us to be fruitful. You're right, now. You're right. He wants us. He expects us to be more and more like Him. That's right. He requires us to be more and more like Him. Amen. There, are, there are benefits of abiding in Him. I didn't get to the benefits today, but I'm going to get to them next time. That's not right, God. There are benefits of sticking with Jesus. Amen. I believe I'll say that one more time. I said there are benefits oh, yeah. with sticking with Jesus. Just tell somebody to stick with them. Stick with them. Get ready to give. The youth department is coming around. As we make ready to give, give according to how God has blessed you. The more you give, the more God will give back unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together and run it over. Will cause men to give unto your bosoms. For those that's watching online, you can give even now. Go to our website, newshelbychurch.org. Follow the prompts to give that way. Those of us that's in the physical sanctuary, let's prepare our hearts and minds to give. Because you cannot be God's given. Oh no. No matter how hard you try. That's right, yes. Yes, sir. It's a blessing in giving. You're right. It's a blessing in being able to give. Amen. Yes, sir. We're ready to give those that are willing and able to stand.